In 2009, Mark was in charge of one of the busiest combat hospitals in the world, the Roll 3 at Kandahar Airfield. The Canadian major and his multinational team broke the records for the number of soldiers, Taliban and civilians they treated. We're good. We are good. We're really good. And what kind of personalities get attracted to that kind of medicine? <laughs> the, uh, there's a flow chart the, for uh, residents to choose their specialty. And the first question is, are you crazy, yes or no? And so if you answer yes, there's only two specialties. And the way to divide those two is, do you have a long attention span? If you say yes, then you go into psychiatry. And if you have no attention span, then you go into emergency medicine. <laughs> and that's where you ended up. That's probably why I ended up there. <laughs> Lost his eyes, lost a leg, lost a hand. This one shot in the foot, this one shot in the head. Do you normally keep a track on your hand? Well, they don't issue us with pads, you know. It's the Canadian government has difficult... <laughs> <laughs> I'm extremely proud of what we did. Um, this 97% survival rate is best in all wars, and it has Canada stamped all over it. So we're extremely proud of that. And to know that I was responsible for 40% of that 97%, uh, well, uh, what can I ask more? Bay one and four are free and ready to go. Four years ago, I came to the Roll 3 hospital with some other Australian journalists to film what I thought would be a quick news story. The Roll 3 hospital in Kandahar looks nondescript from the outside, but inside it contains state-of-the-art medical facilities. The staff are bracing themselves for another busy night. 14 patients are scheduled to arrive, including US soldiers hit by a suicide bomb and children with shrapnel wounds from another blast. We're expecting to make a brief tour of the hospital and then get out of there. But it didn't quite work out like that. Instead, it turned out to be a harrowing 24 hours. And I remember it vividly, uh, probably because you got me to almost break up in front of the camera. Um, so that, that sort of marked me. I remember one reporter uh, was making an article and saying the screams of the wounded. I said, wounded don't scream. Mm. And she said, come on, Mark, you can't hear him? No. Mm. And so she replayed, you know, some uh, stuff that she had taped in the, oh, yeah, it's true, they mm. are. But we just block it out. Mm. It was the most confronting day I've experienced in 20 years as a journalist. I stood by filming while the medics tried to save the lives of several children. I remember feeling a sense of utter shock and helplessness. When one of the children died with three limbs missing, I put down my camera and tried to put it into words instead. Mortuary workers have just taken out the body of a 10-year-old boy who was killed in a mine explosion this morning. He was so small that the body bag was folded in half like a suit pack. And that's how his life was carried out from this hospital. Seeing all of this, I wondered how the medical team could block out the emotion of it all day after day. When I asked Mark how he dealt with the relentless suffering, I was taken aback by the rawness of his response. It's a war. Women and children always pay. That's what's worse. That's all. Available now on iTunes.